Hi, I'm Amanda Bickerstaff, the CEO and founder of AI for Education. Today, I'm going to talk about a question I hear all the time, including in this week in a couple of schools, which is, don't AI detectors work? Can't you just ask ChatGPT if it wrote a, a student's assignment? And if you don't want to watch the whole uh, five minute video, the answer is no. Um, but we're going to go through and actually talk about why these things don't work, um, because I think it's a really important misconception that needs to be debunked before we can really work together to reframe what education needs to be. Now that ChatGPT and Claude and Quillbot can write essays in a way in which it's very hard to detect if it's student or AI written. So so the answer, the reason why I know it's no, besides research that show it doesn't work and actually can be, um, you know, biased against non-native English speakers, is that earlier this summer I had Joe and Mo come on, who are two technologists building proof of effort tools, and I gave them a challenge. You have 30 minutes to see how much you can actually fool AI. And what they use is a couple of tactics, um, putting it through uh, a GPT-4 with a simple prompt, rewriting it, um, and then also putting it through Quillbot. And what we found is if you see a lot of red here. Um, you're going to see that this is really not working. And we used OpenAI when it had its own tool, which it actually closed because it doesn't work. Um, but GPT-0 and Turnitin both were very easily fooled. And then also the easiest way to 100% fool it was just to ask one prompt. So essentially take this, this piece of writing that you wrote, meaning the chatbot, and rewrite it. And what we saw is that 100% of these tools were fooled. And so all of that is to be said that like, it is a fascinating time where like even companies are are really asking you for money um, to pay for tools that do not work. And so I wanted to test it out on my own. It was actually kind of funny. I've, I had a lot of fun this morning doing this. So this is one of our resources that I wrote a couple of weeks ago. And I just pulled this section, which is around this student amendment. And I put it into, uh, you know, ChatGPT um, and ask it to um, kind of rewrite it. Um, and it was really long, and so I just had it rewrite it again, just to make it a little bit shorter. And then what I want to do is try two tools that are still on market. Actually, the first thing I did want to do is actually take, I'm going to take this piece here, and I'm going to do what teachers think you can do, which is you just cut and paste this, put it in a new chat, and ask it, um, did you write this? And what's going to happen is um, the, it says that I did not write that specific passage, which clearly it did. <laughs> so sometimes it'll say I can't tell you it is, but like clearly I just this just happened. Um, but you, so I think this is a really important crystallization that these tools cannot detect what's happening because every context window. Or I, if I ask the same thing, the same context window, we're going to go back here and cut and paste it and ask if it wrote it, it'd say yes, because it can remember within that. But as soon as I go out of that context window, it does not remember what I have done. And so it is not a very effective way. In fact, it's clearly incorrect. And the funny part, I think the funniest part for today for me was actually using Claude, where I had it do the same thing. And then I ended up um, having this piece that, you know, I did not write this text. I do not author original content. And I actually had a pretty funny back and forth where, um, we had a semantic debate where it says in the same window, did you write this text? And it says, no, very, very strongly. And I asked it why, and it says, I do not write. And then I said, well, do you generate? And it says, I do not generate. Um, so I didn't think I was gonna have a semantic and philosophical, philosophical debate with that AI today. But this is another example that these things don't work. But there are a couple tools in the market that say, hey, like we work pretty well. And so I took the similar piece of content and threw it through here. And what you're gonna see is copy leaks actually says this is a human text. And so you're going to see that this is very easily fooled. And at the same time, GPT-0 said it's most likely um, going to be AI generated. But I will tell you that when I, when I uploaded this piece here, where I just had my own piece, um, and I put it through GPT-0. Let's just make sure. Here we go. Is that it says a 28% probability that was written by AI. So even 100% mine, like if a teacher sees that or if you see that, like you could actually think, well, maybe my students cheated a little bit. But in reality, it's just not very, like it, it doesn't work. And I think it's a losing battle. And if anything that I, you know, we can do at the start of the school year is to ensure that our teachers and leaders are not trying to use these tools, instead trying to create policies and create common language that students and teachers can work together to ensure that students are using this responsibly and that teachers are not just trying to find what's been wrong. Thanks for listening.